My name is Raya Shokatbar. I am 62 years old. Uh, I was born in Iran, 1949, to a, basically a middle-class family. My family were Muslim. I left Iran in 1969. By the time I arrived in the United States, it seemed like I left behind Islam and all the identity that I had as a Muslim. As a teenager, my dream was to go to the United States and just be free from any kind of a restrictions or anything that nobody could tell me anything what to do and I wanted to be like American young people. I was studying, I was a student, I was studying and later on I got into my own business. I had my own clothing store in Manhattan Beach which is Southern California by the ocean, very beautiful place and uh, later I moved into a business of real estate I got uh, the highest level uh, of a certificate in order to operate as a real estate broker to have my own business. Over the span of, let's say, 10 years, I became, alhamdulillah, very successful in the business of real estate. And uh, like in, I was still in my 20s and I was driving a Rolls Royce, I had a beach home. I traveled all around the world. I was a model. So I had a big piece of land. It was like five acres. And there were a few homes on it. And I had cows and chickens and rabbits and all kinds of animals. I had vegetable garden and I planted a lot of nice vegetables and I ate organic food, it was very nice. And it was just anything that would basically um, feed the ego. I <laughs> seems like I attained it and I lived it. It seems like that is what I wanted. That is how I measured success by what I had, how I looked, uh, who admired me. I started feeling something was missing. I was feeling very empty. So I started at attending many uh, um, workshops and classes having to do with the science of the mind, you know, basically the new science of the mind and different things, and I was very interested in them. I learned a lot, it was good, but it still was not satisfying my uh, desire for something. There was something, I wasn't, I wasn't sure what it was. I got very attracted to uh, Hinduism. There was something about them that it really attracted me. There was some peace uh, within their behavior that I really was interested in. They worshipped many gods. It seems like I could never do that. I was looking for God. I was really desperately looking for God. But I didn't find God there. So I knew I had to move on and look for God. So. What I got attracted to most next was Buddhism. And I, I found a lot of things about Zen Buddhism and many things uh, about Buddhism that I was very, very uh, interested in. So I joined them. After the Hinduism and after the Buddhism practices and my disappointment with it, it seemed like I got attracted to the New Age uh, movement. New Age movement, before I started searching and many years later up until today, is probably the biggest movement in the United States. Basically, New Age movement is a philosophy that tells you you are the master of your own destiny, you are the master of your own life. In fact, you are God's yourself. 
There were many elements about this I liked, except the part of believing that I was God. I just didn't dare to think this way, but occasionally I would think that I have this power to do whatever I want, and I could be the master of my own destiny, but I couldn't, I was not comfortable to imagine that I was God, so I was uncomfortable with this. When I came to Christianity, I found this different and I found it so close to my own culture, how I was raised with these moral issues. The parents, families, they were together. They were just, they prayed together. They went around together. They it just, it was a togetherness and I felt like I wanted to be part of them. So I felt like really I reached my last destiny. This is where I will stay. So for seven and a half years, I went to church. I went to church, I studied the Bible, I studied with them, I was teaching the Bible, I was doing many things with them, except for one thing. I could not subscribe to the ideology of Trinity. I could not believe that Jesus was God or Son of God or Trinity was another part of God, the three in one were God. So I had this fear that I, if I really put my head into this and I really study about this, I'm going to have to leave this religion also. And I didn't want to leave it. I had no place else to go. This was like they had become my family. I even went to university, Christian university, and I studied theology, Christian theology. I knew the Bible better than most Christians. The pastor told me, of the church, told me, Rai, you've been with us so many years. Don't you think it's time to be baptized and become Christian? I said to him, look, Muslims are Christian and they're Muslims. They, they believe in Jesus as prophet of God and they believe in Muhammad as prophet of God. So there's no, there's no conflict. I don't need to become a Christian. I can still keep my identity as a Muslim and still go to church. He said, no, it's not like this. He said, you have to become baptized. And once you're baptized, you have to believe in Jesus as the Son of God, as God and Trinity, all three in one. You have to believe in that and you have to leave Islam. You are no longer Muslim. You have to make this decision because you've been with us so many years and you have not taken this path. I said, can you please give me four days I, I need to think about this. It's a sure take four days and come back. So I knew I had this Quran that I had bought when I married my husband. And it was in English. I had never opened it up. At the time, I left my kids with my uh, ex-husband. At the time, we had uh, separated. And I took the Quran and the Bible, and I went to the mountains, and I checked into a very remote uh, motel. And I prayed. Allah. I asked him to show me the right way. I said, Ya yeah, Allah, I have looked for you so many places for so long. I went from Hinduism to Buddhism to New Age to Christianity, so many schools of thoughts. I looked for you and I didn't find you there. And I'm looking for you. I need to be with you. I need to be near you. Please show me. I have these two holy books. These are the last thing that I have left. And I have thought after Christianity was the end, I have no place to go. But then I remembered that there was still Islam, that I had completely forgotten about it. I opened the Quran. The first thing I looked at was Surah Al-Fatiha. started with Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In the name of Allah, the most gracious, most merciful. When I read this, my heart opened up. I imagined all the books that I had read, religious books that I had read. I don't remember reading anything that started with the name of Allah. 
So something happened to me. I had some, like, it seems like a shock, but in a good way. So I moved on to the next sentence. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Of course, I am saying that now, but uh, now I know Arabic a lot better. At the time, I read only in English. Praise be to the Lord of the universe. And I started thinking how many lords I sat in front, in front of them, that all these people worshipped, but they were not the Lord of the universe. And I felt, I felt that I am in front of the Lord of the universe. Something was happening to me. Rahman Rahim was the next verse that I read. The most gracious, most merciful. And I'm thinking, how gracious, how merciful this Lord is that I forgot about him, but he didn't forget about me. Maliki Yom the owner of the Day of Judgment. Again, I remembered all this Hinduism, Buddhism, religion that I sat and practiced, where they believed that there's no Day of Judgment, there's only reincarnation. When you die, you're born again. If you're a good person, your karma is good, you did good things, you are reborn into a better state, otherwise in a worse state. This continues going until you achieve godhood. This is what they believed. But Allah is telling me that he's the owner of the day of judgment. That means there's a day of judgment. <laughs> You alone we worship, and your aid do we seek. By this time, I felt maybe there should be a rock, a big rock dropped from the sky and hit me in the head for all the wrong things that I did. Because Allah is showing us, teaching us to ask him and say, you alone we worship, and your aid do we seek. How many places did I go? How many? Gods and people and religions did I go to seek their aid? How many did I do? And Allah is telling me only, He is the only one we should ask. So I am starting to tremble. My body is like I am completely in a different planet. The next verse is talk about Ehdina Sarat al Mustaqim. Guide us to the straight path. Guide us to the straight path. path. And I started thinking that he is answering my dua because I've been looking for the straight path. All this time I'm asking Allah to guide me the straight path, but my own mind is telling me, study this religion and this religion, all this religion. But at the end, I am asking Allah, guide us to the straight path, and he is bringing me to the straight path. Surat al and Amta alayhim the path of those whom you have bestowed your grace upon them. Not of those who have earned your anger, not those who have gone astray. When I read this last verse, I passed out. I don't remember whether I was gone for one minute, one hour. I have no recollection of time, how much time passed. It was like It was like a lost child that found her mother. I knew that I found Allah.
back to the church and I thanked the pastor as I came to thank you for asking me to be baptized. He was very happy. He said, okay, good. I'm so glad. Are you ready to be baptized now? I said, no, I'm ready to go back to Islam. And he said to me, sadly, he said, I will pray for you. And I looked at him very happily. I said, I will pray for you also. So this is how that episode ended. <laughs>